ever found yourself yawning during the day wondering why you're so tired? Well, it's not just about getting a good night's rest. Sleep is an essential part of our lives, playing a crucial role in everything from learning and memory to focus and attention. You see, when we sleep, our brains go to work, processing and consolidating information from the day. It's like a night shift crew tidying up and preparing for the next day. Research from Harvard Medical School shows that after people sleep, they tend to retain information and perform better on memory tasks. So without enough sleep, our brains can't function at their best. Now let's talk about sleep hygiene. It's a variety of practices that are necessary to have normal quality nighttime sleep and full daytime alertness. This includes factors like maintaining a regular sleep schedule and creating a relaxing bedtime routine. So it's clear that sleep is not just about rest, it's about keeping our brains in top shape. But what happens when we don't get enough sleep? When we miss out on our much needed rest, our bodies and minds start to protest. Picture this, you're trying to concentrate on a task, but your mind feels foggy and your thoughts seem to be moving in slow motion. That's your brain on sleep deprivation. A study from the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine found that people who were sleep deprived for just a few nights experienced significant drops in their cognitive speed and memory performance. That's right, even a couple of nights of poor sleep can put your brain in a fog. And it's not just your cognitive abilities that take a hit. When you're sleep deprived, your mood can take a nosedive too. You might feel irritable, anxious, or even depressed. According to a study from the University of California, Berkeley, Lack of sleep can amplify negative emotions and decrease our ability to regulate them. Sleep deprivation doesn't just affect us on an individual level, it can also impact our performance at school or work. A review published in the journal Sleep found that students who were sleep deprived performed worse on memory and attention tasks compared to their well-rested classmates. Similarly, a study from the American Academy of Sleep Medicine showed that workers who did not get enough sleep were less productive and made more mistakes. And let's not forget about the physical effects. Chronic sleep deprivation can lead to a host of health problems, including heart disease, diabetes, and obesity. The National Sleep Foundation reports that adults who sleep less than six hours per night are at a higher risk for these conditions. The consequences of sleep deprivation are like a domino effect. It starts with a few nights of poor sleep, then it affects your mood, cognitive abilities, and eventually your physical health. And once that first domino falls, it can be hard to stop the rest from tumbling. Clearly, lack of sleep can have far-reaching consequences. Parents, are you wondering how you can help your child get enough sleep? It might seem like a daunting task, but there are a few simple strategies that can make a world of difference. Firstly, establishing a regular bedtime routine is key. This can include activities like reading a book, taking a warm bath, or simply having a quiet chat about the day. Creating a routine not only signals to your child's body that it's time to wind down, but it also provides a comforting sense of predictability. Next, ensure that your child's environment is conducive to sleep. A dark, quiet, and cool room can greatly improve the quality of sleep. Consider investing in blackout curtains or a white noise machine if needed. Don't forget about the influence of screen time. Limiting electronic devices before bed can help your child fall asleep faster and sleep more soundly. Remember, your child's sleep habits can set the stage for their future health and success. Teachers, have you noticed sleepy students in your classroom? An all too familiar sight, isn't it? It's important for educators to recognize the signs of sleep deprivation in their students, as it can greatly affect their learning and overall performance. So how should teachers act when they notice a sleepy student? Well, encouraging breaks could be a good start. Short breaks between lessons can help rejuvenate students, keeping their minds fresh and ready to absorb knowledge. Furthermore, integrating active learning activities into the curriculum can also help keep students engaged. Think about it, a lively discussion or a hands-on project is far more likely to keep a student alert and invested than a one-sided lecture. Remember, it's not about pressuring students to stay awake, but about creating an environment conducive to learning. After all, the classroom should be a place of inspiration and discovery, not fatigue. A well-rested student is a more effective learner. So, how can we ensure we're getting quality sleep? Well, it all boils down to a few key strategies. First off, one of the most effective ways to improve sleep quality is by limiting exposure to screens before bed. Our devices emit a blue light that can interfere with our natural sleep-wake cycle, also known as our circadian rhythm. So, try to put down your phone, tablet, or laptop at least an hour before you plan to sleep. 
Next, maintaining a healthy diet can have a profound impact on sleep quality. Eating a balanced diet, rich in fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, and whole grains can promote better sleep. On the flip side, foods high in sugar and processed foods may interfere with your sleep. Now let's talk about some bad habits that can lead to sleep problems. Consuming caffeine late in the day can keep you awake at night. Even if you manage to fall asleep, your sleep might not be as restful. Similarly, alcohol, while it might make you feel drowsy, actually disrupts the sleep cycle and can lead to poorer sleep quality. Stress is another significant factor that can interfere with sleep. Engaging in relaxing activities before bed, like reading a book, meditating, or taking a warm bath, can help reduce stress and prepare your body for sleep. A consistent sleep schedule is also crucial. Try to go to bed and wake up at the same time every day, even on weekends. This consistency can help regulate your body's internal clock and make it easier to fall asleep and wake up. Lastly, make your sleep environment as comfortable as possible. This could mean investing in a good mattress, making sure your room is dark, quiet, and at a comfortable temperature, and even using a white noise machine if you find it helpful. Remember, everyone's sleep needs are different, and it's important to listen to your body and find what works best for you. Quality sleep is within reach if we make it a priority. But how long should we actually be sleeping? And what about naps? Now, when it comes to the duration of sleep, research shows that it varies across different age groups. For instance, the National Sleep Foundation recommends that newborns should sleep between 14 to 17 hours a day, while teenagers require about 8 to 10 hours. As adults, we need approximately 7 to 9 hours of sleep each night. But remember, these are just guidelines, and individual sleep needs may vary. One common question people often ask is, can I make up for lost sleep during the night by napping during the day? Well, the answer is both yes and no. Napping can certainly help to improve mood, alertness, and performance. A study published in the journal Sleep found that even a brief nap of 20 to 30 minutes can provide a significant boost in alertness and cognitive performance. However, it's essential to remember that while naps can be beneficial, they are not a replacement for a good night's sleep. Long or frequent naps might interfere with nighttime sleep. According to the Mayo Clinic, if you have trouble sleeping at night, you might want to consider limiting your naps or taking them earlier in the afternoon. So, what's the takeaway here? Sleep is not a luxury, it's a necessity. The right amount of sleep and the occasional nap can do wonders for our health and productivity. But it's also important to strike a balance. Too little sleep can leave us feeling tired and unfocused, while too much sleep can also have negative effects. In the end, it's all about listening to your body and understanding what it needs. If you're constantly feeling tired, it might be a sign that you're not getting enough sleep or quality sleep. On the other hand, if you're spending a lot of time in bed but still don't feel rested, it might be worth talking to a healthcare provider. So, whether it's a full night's sleep or a quick nap, getting enough rest is key. Before we wrap up, let's make sure this important information really sinks in. How much sleep should we ideally get each night? And what role does sleep play in learning and memorization? What are some steps that parents can take to ensure their child gets enough sleep? And how should teachers respond when they notice a student is sleepy? Don't forget to share your thoughts and insights in the comments below. We hope you found this video enlightening and helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and share it with others who might benefit from it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button to receive notifications about our upcoming videos. We're always working on new content to help you understand the science behind everyday life. Remember your sleep is important, take care of it and it will take care of you. Until next time, stay rested.